Aloha and good morning and welcome to the north shore of Oahu as we're checking the surf at the famous Bonsai Pipeline for the season finale of the Samsung Galaxy Championship Tour. This is the Billabong Pipe Masters in memory of Andy Irons and the final stop of the championship tour season. Good morning and welcome to Dawn Patrol. I'm Joe Turpel. Coming up on the show today, it's day two of the waiting period. We'll see if the trials will get in the lineup and we'll check out the forecast to see if we will get some heats underway quickly here. And also we'll invite a brand new rookie on tour. Frederico Marias from Portugal joins us on the set and we'll talk about his chances as well to be the first European surfer to ever win the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing here at the Bonsai Pipeline. What an amazing show we have in store for you today. I'm alongside a couple of legends of the sport, former world <laughs> champ, 89 world champion, Martin Potter. Good morning, my friend. Good morning, Joe. Strider Wazalewski, this wave, easily to say it's your favorite of all time. Yes, it is, my friend. I love this wave <laughs> a lot. Like, pretty much, almost, there's nothing else I love more. Almost. Right. Well, you know, my family, but <laughs> pipeline. It's right on that list. Well, the other day we were thinking about coming into the Pipe Masters with the world title already clinched. There's one event that really does stand alone, where we got to talk to some of the Pipe Master legends of the sport. Kelly Slater's won the most amount of times, a seven-time Pipe Master champion, and it was really cool to see them all gather yesterday to really talk about how much this wave means to them, Potts. Well, it's one of those waves, isn't it? It's, it's, it's iconic. I mean, Jerry Lopez made a famous way back when, but it's, you know, it's sort of in, in the line of, you know, world title, triple crown, pipe masters. If you can get all three of those on your mantelpiece, uh, you've had an amazing career, but uh, it's one of the toughest events to win, that's for sure. Going back to the 70s with the early pipe master wins, 1971, Jeff Hackman, then Jerry Lopez went back to back. Strider, you came to pipe maybe a little bit after that era, but I'm sure you had some memorable moments still surfing with Jerry at the pipeline. Yeah, I actually, yeah, there was one moment I remember seeing him glide into like a second reef wave and just the, how smooth and how much of a cakewalk. He, he has a quote saying it's a cakewalk. You just have to make the drop. <laughs> but he did. He slid right in, and it was one of those moments where I just sat back and went, wow, he yep. is the, the smoothest best guy out here. And for me, you know, there's nothing better than to come into one of these waves, gliding in and, and stand through that huge barrel and get spit out. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. And I guess, Pots, before Andy got four, Kelly got seven, one of your good rivals, Tommy Carroll, three-time champ of pipe. That was a huge statement from an Australian. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Tom, you know, once he put that helmet on, Joe, it was, it was all done and dusted for everyone else. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he attacked the wave a little bit more. You talk about Jerry, how he glided in. You know, Tom waited for the wave to, to jack up, and then he'd spin around late knife it in, snap under the lip. I mean, he, he was probably the only guy I've ever seen get a big score on a single turn out here. It was called the snap that, that was heard around the world, but uh, he was so dominant. You know, him and Derek Ho had some incredible battles, and hence uh, none of us got a look in, really. <laughs> <laughs> Always impressive looking back. Let's see what's going to happen now. The trial's on deck to kick off the morning if the call is on. Let's say good morning to Rosie Hodge and Deputy Commissioner Renato Hickel. Good morning, boys. Well, Renata, we've just wrapped up an exciting QS season. What's your initial reaction to the rookie class of 2017? It was amazing. Amazing to see, especially the campaign of uh, Jetson Andre, Jack, Jack Freestone, and Portuguese uh, icon now, um, um, Frederico Moraes. Sorry, guys. And, um, you know, like, it's really exciting to see, and it's going to be a really good battle, too, here at the Pipe Masters with uh, Jadson now, Jeremy Flores, Jack, and also Kano Igarachi, free of the pressure, you know, of having qualified and see if they're going to push guys out, making the cut through the CT and letting guys like Zeke Lau that is now waiting in that 11th position to climb into the CT next year. And one of the things we look forward to is also the pipeline trials out here, and obviously that's on standby for today. Is there enough action in the water to get that underway? I don't think so. You know, it's conditions are clean and beautiful behind us, but only two to three foot today. So we're going to call the competition off and we're going to dress again tomorrow, 7 o'clock, same time. Another lay day for us, boys. Let's get to the Surfline forecast with you, Joe. Thank you very much, Rosie and Renato Hickel, for the quick call. The trials heats are looking incredible. Also featuring former pipe masters like Jamie O'Brien among that list. That first heat, Kalani Chapman, Reef McIntosh, that local story that really likes to upset the world title showdown. So let's hope we put them in some really good waves as we bring up the Surfline forecast. Strider, anything you're looking at? Yeah, well, there's a lot going on. I mean, as you can see, there's activity there. You can see the big purple blob, and then even closer, you've got that other swell coming around from the, the northeast, which is what you don't want. What you want is that one that's coming from the top corner there, and it slides in in the west, the west-northwest being the 
prime time direction for pipeline. So as you can see right there, you can see where it says pipeline. You can see the arrows, and those are the arrows you want to see. So there's more swell building as we get through the week. But we're going to see there's a lot of activity up there, which is all we need is for it to get cold in Japan, forms those storms, and then it pushes off those lows. Right there, as you can see through the day, not much happening here. Really kind of small, even dropping off through the day and then picking back up a tiny bit in the afternoon today. But this is what we're looking at, uh -huh. Monday, Tuesday, which is looking like we could have a start either Monday or Tuesday. If it comes early, Monday, if it comes late, Tuesday, we got a six to 10 foot faces, probably maybe even a little bit bigger, which is exactly what we need. And if it comes in with a little bit of north on it, back door could be pumping. So we could have a great show for the, you know, all the trialists. Great to see that. So just a couple of days away from possibly seeing some solid surf right here at Pipeline to get the trials underway. Coming up next, you're going to see John John Florence break down his favorite wave in the world. And after that, we'll have Frederico Marias join us on Dawn Patrol. Be right back. The thing that makes Pipeline so dangerous is that it's a really big wave breaking onto really shallow water. It's a little more unpredictable in a way, and you have a right to it. You can get one that goes, turns really bad really quick, or you can get one that turns really good. And so you kind of got to pick your days sometimes because it's really easy to get hurt out there, you know, especially when the beach is built up real big and you have a lot of backwash. And, it's real crowded and you get frustrated and make a bad decision. There's just a lot of factors that go into surfing that wave. The reef is pretty gnarly. It's not super sharp, it's real flat. It's like a concrete basketball court almost with some potholes in it. Some spots are just perfectly flat, smooth, and I think it's just from the waves just pounding on it every single year. You have the backwash, you have the wave, you have the unpredictableness, and just tons of people, and all that going into just one big lip onto a concrete slab. <laughs> it's kind of scary.
Aloha, good morning, and welcome back to Dawn Patrol here on day two of the waiting period for the Billabong Pipe Masters in memory of Andy Irons. We're going to wait for better waves. We'll get the trials in the lineup to see who will be joining the main event once we get into the main round of competition for the final stop of the Samsung Galaxy Championship Tour. All year round, we're trying to make predictions on who's going to join the top level of the sport the following season, and we have one of them right here, a rookie in 2017, Frederico Moraes. Congratulations on joining the Dream Tour. Thank you so much, well, guys. Man. Thank you. Thank so you good so. to see your run, Freddie. Uh, amazing to look back on your history, uh, just working through QSs, and actually, you always had a great relationship with Hawaii, but were you realizing that you could still have so much potential with two QS 10,000s before the Triple Crown started? I mean, I always said, like, if there's, if there's a place where I want to qualify, it's, it's here in Hawaii. Because uh, I just feel my surfing really fits these two waves, Hollywood and Sunset. It's kind of similar to Portugal. Big right-hand point breaks, powerful, big turns. And, and I, I, I believed. And after a fifth place in Brazil and coming straight to here, I, I knew I had a, a good chance. And... Well, it's, I live for this, so I really wanted to qualify, and I did it. It was interesting, Frederico, because the QS 10,000s that really got underway from Bolido to the U.S. Open to even at home in Kashkaish, those were early knockouts for you. Was there any point when you were worried about qualification? Uh, yeah, I was worried, and, and I did ask Dog, I feel like I'm doing everything right, but it's just not coming my way. Like, what, what's wrong? Like, what can we do? And... And then it gets hard for Richard as well as a coach. Like, he feels we're doing everything right, but it's just not happening. And, and that's what he told me. Just, well, keep working. It's, it's going to come, come your way one day. And let's do this. Let's believe. And, well, I guess it worked out <laughs> in Hawaii. Yeah, I was about to ask you that. I mean, uh, this year as opposed to years before, have you changed anything? I know you've, you're working closer with Richard Marsh now. But uh, it, what was different coming into Hawaii? Um, I don't know. I... I'd, we didn't ch change anything. We kept just the same routine, waking up early, surfing the breaks, small or big. Just uh, I kept surfing big boards, didn't, didn't go to 6.0s or 5.11s when, when there was no swell. Just kept my 6.4, 6.2, 6.6, just riding the boards. I was going to ride in the comp anyway. And, and yeah, and just try to, to find the, the best lineups. And I guess that, that was my, my secret. Well, you had... A crazy connection with Holly Eve as we look back at the Hawaiian Pro, the first stop of the Triple Crown. What do you love about that wave? What do you think it brings out of your surfing? Uh, I think it's it's a really powerful wave but with a bit of high performance so you can mix everything and I love that we have we have I think we have a, a wave like this at home, Koshas. Yeah. It's a bit similar. It's not like Holly Eva but it's similar. And and since I've been a kid I've been coming to Hawaii first with my family when I was 11 and and now with Billabong and Dog um, and I've always loved Haleiva so and and I've had the one year I, ma I made semis I always had good hits good scores out there so I was stoked to be here and surfing Haleiva and the swell looked amazing and was so fun a tie-break decision against John John Florence <laughs> the newly crowned world champ and you had back-to-back Seven three threes and the, the tiebreak remained the same. What was going through your mind when you're hearing those scores? Uh, I know it's it was a weird situation, but but at the same time I knew it was better to be second than third or fourth because the <laughs> points were, were going to be precious and and I was sto I was stoked with the second place. Obviously I wanted to win so bad, win a, a, an event in Hawaii and would would have been amazing. But but John John is the f is a f world champ and he's surfing amazing he surfed amazing in the final and i guess it was i think it was a fair was a fair final and well i had fun <laughs> exciting we see in the big move from freddie all the way into the top 10 of the qs after the final at holly eva when we come back from the break we'll dive into the vans world cup of surfing where frederico marias sealed the deal qualifying for the dream tour
Thank you for watching Don Patrol here on the second day of the waiting period for the Billabong Pipe Masters. We're still hanging out with rookie Frederico Moraes representing Portugal as he'll be having a complete run on the championship tour in 2017. Also alongside former world champ Martin Potter back in 2013. Freddie, Potts and I saw you get on that roll, making the final at Sunset Beach. And Potts, you had some amazing words for this young surfer from Portugal. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, to me, Sunset's one of the most difficult waves on the North Shore to work out. It's such a big playing field. But, you know, watching you in this event, um, you know, obviously getting second to Geordie, but it just seemed like all the way through, you, you were in the right place at the right time. You are picking the right turns. What was going through your mind then? I mean, it, it looked like you had such a good relationship going with Sunset. Uh, I know, and to be, to be honest, the first, the first, my triple crown in 2013, uh, I lost first round in Hall even, and then and then I was straight to to sunset, and it wasn't my favorite wave till I started surfing it like every day, and then I started like, whoa, this wave is really fun, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, I just I, f I feel like the lineup is easy for me, like I kind of the waves come to me, I don't know, I it's. I just feel like I have a good connection with Sunset. What was the vibe like from your support crew going, okay, Freddie, this is your shot. You had to be feeling the pressure of knowing this could seal the deal for you. Uh, I know, I was very anxious since the, the first day of the, of the competition, but uh, I guess I had to, to deal with that. Uh, it was my, my, my big chance to qualify. I knew I had a, a really good chance. Sunset is a wife I love, and I guess I had to do it, yeah, and <laughs> it worked out. As we look at the Triple Crown, one of the most prestigious honors to win in the surfing world. And you are number one on the rankings heading into the Pipe Masters. And with the injury from Alejo Moniz, Matt Banting, we're seeing yourself and Bruce Irons move into the main event. Now with a shot to be the first European to win this big honor. What's going through your mind when you take that in? I know, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this. Um, just before the final, on the beach marshal, someone told me, oh, now you're gonna, you're in the lead. Like, you're first on the rankings of the Triple Crown. I was like, well, all right. Like, my goal was to qualify. I, I wasn't even thinking about the, the Triple Crown. But now that I have a shot and, I, and I'm into pipe, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna give everything I have. It would be amazing. If, if you look at all the names that w have won the, the Triple Crown, uh, world champs, amazing surfers, you know, just legends. And, and if I can be, in the middle of them, well, that's, that's a dream. Well, there's a long way to go, though, Freddie. You've got a, um, obviously an a automatic invite into the Pipe Masters because of that, but the support that's coming from home, I mean, uh, there must be a lot of uh, friends and family and uh, a lot of people uh, showing some support from Portugal. I know, it's amazing. Uh, everyone's just freaking out, uh, li just like <laughs> me. <laughs> but, but, yeah, everyone's stoked, and, and the support is amazing. I, I feel like... Portugal is one of the best crowds. They really like, they really appreciate, and they really enjoy when you do good, and yep. and they're just there for you, and that's amazing. Well, Tiago Pérez, the most successful surfer from Portugal to be on the tour for many years, did he contact you after he heard the news? Of oh Paul yeah, he he sent me a text straight away. Uh, we've been good friends since since I'm really really young, and and I guess this this means a lot to him as well as he fell off tour. Uh, a few years now and I'm the next one to qualify, I think he's, he's happy for me. How important is that though, I mean knowing that you know you're flying the flag for Portugal, do you feel that kind of pressure or does that, or does that give you sort of an uplifting feeling? I think, I think that gives me that, that feeling that you're talking about Pots and, and I think that there's no pressure, I, I don't want to feel pressure, I just want to enjoy myself and the people like Portugal is just cheering for me, they just want to see me do good and I guess there's no need to, to feel pressure from them because yep. they don't want that. They just want me happy, I guess. <laughs> really yeah. cool. Oftentimes when we're hearing, seeing you surf a heat in Portugal, we don't often hear Freddie. We hear Kikish. We're going to have you explain <laughs> that in just a moment when we come back from the break as the rookie continues to hang out with us on Dom Patrol. Be right back.
Aloha, good morning. Welcome back to Dawn Patrol here at the Billabong Pipe Masters in memory of Andy Irons. Joe Tufel alongside former world champ and now rookie on tour, Frederico Marias. Frederico, it's really fun to look back at the last couple of years. We're asking you about your nickname, Kikish. Where yeah. did that come from? Uh, Kikish, it's a, it's a funny story. Uh, when I was really young, my a cousin of mine couldn't say Frederico. It was really hard. <laughs> and and randomly just started calling me Kikish. I don't I don't know why, but then just stuck. My family started calling me Kikish, then my friends started calling me Kikish, <laughs> and now everyone calls me Kikish. <laughs> do you mind if we do too? Oh, uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Obviously, we're so excited to see what's going to happen in the Pipe Masters. We know your relationship was spot on with Holly Eva and with Sunset Peach. Do you feel just as comfortable surfing pipe and backdoor? Uh, pipe is a bit is a bit different. It's harder to to get wives. Uh, whenever it gets good, it's just so crowded and all the locals. Uh, but I guess just that's part of it. I'm just going. I just feel like so grateful to be able to surf out there with just other three guys or you know just a few other guys. It's so good, so I'm just going to enjoy myself. I think it's, uh, you know, for me anyway, it's, it's very similar to, to Super Tubos when it's breaking. I mean, it's just a, a steep drop, pull into the barrel and, and hope you come out. So I know, yeah. That's I what exactly. you got to take, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And, and I, li I love super, tub super Tubes, and whenever it's good and it's breaking, I'm, I'm there trying to catch some good waves. So that's what I'm going to do here. Perfect. Well, it's interesting, Frederico, because when we first saw your probably best heats of your life was as a wild card, and you always had to surf against Kelly on your home <laughs> court. You had to surf against Mick Fanning, and you had great success. So now we're looking at you probably taking on John John, Medina, Jordy, or Wilco. We haven't done the seating yet because we're waiting for the other names. But how do you feel so comfortable against the biggest names of the sport? Uh, I know. I just, I guess I have nothing to lose. Uh, maybe lo maybe next year will be a bit different, but at least this year I had nothing to lose. I just I just wanted to surf, enjoy myself, and and that's what I did, and that's what I'm gonna do here. I've got nothing to lose. All of them they have like they need to qualify, or there's something going on, and I'm just I'm just gonna enjoy myself. For me, it's a it's an important thing to have that uh, that feeling of coming up against the big guys and not worrying about the names, focusing more on your own game. Yeah, I know because. It only depends on me. I'm, I just need to do my surfing and and get the good wave. It's all about me. It's not about who I'm surfing against. It can it can be a really hard hit, Gabriel John John, obviously, but I, I can block them all hit. I need to surf, so I better focus on me and not on them. Impressive because you've done that so many times in the past. Seen it executed as a wild card. Now we're looking forward to see you as a full-blown rookie next year on tour. The celebrations were next level when you look back <laughs> at that tape. And I saw you doing so many media responsibilities following that. You're a superhero back home. Does it feel like it? Uh, yeah, it feels, it feels a little bit, a little <laughs> bit, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the interviews were crazy. The, the support was amazing. Everything was crazy. I think that was um, a big moment for me in Portugal. It kind, it kind of put me out, a bit more out there, even on the on the world surfing, just because it was Kelly Slater in 2013. And then, and then that year I finished rookie of the Triple Crown as well. So it, it really gave me a boost as a, as a surfer. And yeah, it was a good year, definitely. Thank you very much, Frederico Moraes, for joining us on Dom Patrol. Best of luck in the Pipe Masters, and can't wait to see you in 2017. Thank you, Thank you so much, Thanks, guys. Brother. Thank you. And that's Thank it you, for Dom Patrol today. Tomorrow we will be catching up with John John Florence and Gabriel Medina. Number one and two in the world are still trying to win the Billabong Pipe Masters. We'll see you then. I think it's the most exciting way to watch. You never know what's going to happen. If you can make the barrel or not, if you can make the draw. Pipe Masters is a really hard event to win. It might be one of the hardest events to win. We surfers know how hard it is. So every good surfer that won here pipe is pretty much a legend.